Hey everybody, I am Sarah. Welcome back to Overkill Reviews, pandemic style. This is Banger's weekly heavy metal review show. You might hear some meowing in the background. That is my cat, Odin. And uh, yeah, we're doing the distancing reviews to keep all of you safe and hopefully entertained while you're staying home. This week, I am reviewing the newest studio album by someone I would call the Andrew W.K of traditional heavy metal. That's right, I am referring to The Professor himself, also known as Mr. Chris Black. His band High Spirits is releasing their newest studio album. It's called Hard to Stop. They are releasing it via the consistently excellent High Roller Records on July 31st. High Spirits was formed in 2009 in Chicago, Illinois, and they have been spearheaded by Chris Black ever since. And honestly, Chris Black has been a relentlessly positive force in underground heavy metal. So he first cemented his Professor Black moniker as a writer for Metal Maniacs. And he's been very prolific under his solo moniker, which is called Professor Black, who last released three simultaneous albums in October 2018. He also works with his blackened heavy metal project Don Brigger, who most recently released an album called Snake on March 20th. You can get that on Bandcamp. And of course, he has more bands than that, including the band Actor, who released an album called Placebo in February. He is a music machine, and we should get back to High Spirits. And they released their debut album or a compilation of like releases, depending on how you want to frame it, in 2009. The albums that followed included the extremely, extremely popular album, Another Night. This is how I got into this band. Uh, this one came out in 2011. That was followed by the album called You Are Here in 2014, and then came Motivator in 2016. And in between those albums and this new upcoming album, they released multiple more EPs, singles, and compilations. So the band is now back with the album Hard to Stop, which is, you know, an obvious mantra for Chris. This dude is a hardcore metal lifer. And even amidst a pandemic that brought, you know, the world and the music industry to a complete grinding halt, he's still super committed to releasing, you know, pretty positive music at, for, you know, all of us who are the pissed off shut in masses. So for that, we got to salute him. This is the album we need during quarantine. It is bouncy, it is upbeat, it is relentlessly positive, which is totally High Spirits. Uh, high Spirits like clearly worship 70s and 80s rock and heavy metal. And as a result, they sound kind of like a combination of, you know, bands like Thin Lizzy and ACDC and Heavy Load. And uh, they obviously also really loved the new wave of British heavy metal. And as a result, their songs are, they're repetitive, they're big, there's huge sing-alongs, and they're positive and they're fun. Altogether, when I saw High Spirits at the Wings of Metal Festival in uh, Montreal, it was really this totally unprecedented experience. And it's because of the energy that this band brought. It just made this very true metal-oriented festival into this massive party. It felt a lot like, and this is the only comparable band I can really think of, is when I saw... Andrew W.K., like she is beautiful, Andrew W.K., back at Warp Tour when I was like 15 years old, everyone was going absolute batshit. And that is exactly what happened at Wings of Metal. The mood of the entire crowd really shifted and the entire venue, like for the hour that the band was playing, was just like vibrating with energy. People were jumping up and down in unison, dancing, crowd surfing. Like it was just like this really electric energy. And they were like, everyone was having the time of their lives. And the dudes in the band, they were all wearing these like matching outfits and they had these great coordinated dance moves and it was it was just fun and you know we need more of that in heavy metal kicking off with the track since you've been gone which 
No is not a cover of Kelly Clarkson's mega hit or of the Rainbow Song, Since You've Been Gone, um, which was on the album Down to Earth, which also incidentally, well, is a cover itself, but that's neither here nor there. The song, it's perfect. It kicks off with this guitar solo and you're basically being pushed into the deep end of the album instantaneously. So yeah, that solo, it's a great intro for an album that is just pure energy from start to finish. My personal favorite comes with the fourth song, which is called Hearts Will Burn. And it has this like repeating lyrical segment that really reminds me of Heavy Load, who are these like infamous Swedish rockers. Uh, if you haven't heard Heavy Load, then uh, buckle up. In the following song, it's called Voice in the Wind. It starts off, it is briefly reminiscent of like 90s pop punk. It has this spoken word intro, then this slower speed and this like floating lick that kind of reminds me of the more metallic parts of like Dookie era Green Day and even mid period Sum 41. And yes, I know that you're all like rolling your eyes. And before you turn your nose up at all the prop references in this review, like Kelly Clarkson, <laughs> Green Day Tookie, Sum 41, blah, 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 blah. These are intentional and it's because High Spirits has this great penchant for writing memorable music with big hooks and big choruses and super catchy little segments. And what genre does that kind of describe? Pop music. This is like pop metal, it's party metal, it's fun metal. Another highlight comes with the song Midnight Sun, and that is due to the layered vocals and the energetic drums. This one really reminds me of Thin Lizzy, and I think it's because of the mixture of like, well, it's the dynamics, but it's also the nice sense of like morose with joyful, because I think that like Thin Lizzy really kind of embodied those two things. Now to switch gears. As per usual, Chris Black recorded this album, and instead of a band member doing the mixing, as has happened with previous albums, they decided to recruit the Dan Swano to do the mixing. And I think I can hear the difference on this record. It just sounds a little bit more glossy. It's got a little bit more sheen. And given that I think that, you know, this album is really calling to mind High Spirits, like, you know, peak, which is, again, another night, I think it's a really good decision for them. So nice work, Dan Swano, as if you need the approval of anyone, cause holy shit, dude, your discography is amazing. Now for what's bad. If you're one of those true metal warriors who like inexplicably hates ACDC or Thin Lizzy or Heavy Load or like Idle Hands or really any band that like excels at choruses and sing-alongs and like making fun music that makes you want to dance and make you feel like you have the power, you know, to like defeat evil and those types of things, then you probably already don't really like High Spirits. Uh, you'll probably say uh, that all the songs sound kind of similar or that, you know, the tempo is like pretty consistent throughout the albums. Uh, and you know what, you'd, you'd be, I guess, technically correct. But I also think that you're maybe like missing the point and like missing out on a really fun time. Like, do you also hate like chocolate and like ice cream? Where does that leave us? Do we need heavy metal that always feels and tries to sound evil and brutal? Or do we also need metal that makes you want to party and forget that the world is garbage? Let's find out. I think this is already a foregone conclusion. Like Higher Spirits are a fun party rocking band. They are super consistent live. I think they're one of the best live bands out there. Although their albums like don't feature a huge amount of differentiation, they really help lift you out of the, you know, the mundane reality of life, of, of a pandemic. And for all of those reasons, also because I think that this is quite possibly their best offering yet, this album is getting four skulls out of five here on Overkill Reviews. Oh, my cat. Come here. Psst, psst, come here. <laughs> Rather than talk entirely about new releases, I'm going to do kind of like a recommended, if you like, album suggestion for recent party metal that also makes you feel good. The first album I want to recommend is Hitter. That is the same band that I talked about in Cassette Cult. Their demo came out. They have a new album called Hard Enough that came out on May 1st, and it's some serious party metal that sounds like Plasmatics meets Motorhead. 
After that, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about Greyhawk. They are an American epic power metal band. They have a new album. It's called Keepers of the Flame. Came out on June 16th, and it's a hugely fun slab of epic power metal. It's a good time. Meanwhile, if you want to be an agonizingly dark, true metal, uh, all brutal, all the time person, then I've got two other recommendations for albums that are upcoming that I'm really, really excited about. The first one is from my favorite active black metal band. That band is called Have a Crew New. You might already be familiar with them because they are amazing. They have a brand new album that is coming out. I can't say it in Finnish, but it's U-I-N-U-O-S-S-Y-O-M-E-I-N-S-O-T-A. It's coming out August 14th via Nature Mac Productions. And honestly, I'm pretty sure that that is going to be uh, the best heavy metal album of 2020. Finally, one more recommendation for you. And that is by a up and coming Canadian death doom band. The album Atra Mentius, it's called Stygian. And it is being released on August 21st via 20 Bucks Bin, who we all know are fantastic. So yeah, there's some black metal, some death metal, some power metal, some like punk speed metal, and some trad metal for you. And of course, an Odin kitty. This is Sarah signing off. Thanks for watching.